You ready to make history? Come on now. Yeah. You know there's there's these two words. And when I say them, people get goosebumps because they, they know. They know what happens next. So without further ado, free smoke. <laughs> Look. Scared cause I'm drowning in silence with bad thoughts These days I don't have nothing to say, man, the bad talks I put in headphones on my driver Pull up to the spot and give a good dick and godiva I can't lie, I'm uninspired No more pillow talking about nonsense I only stick around to put some band-aids on my conscience I don't know why I feel so bad, nigga That's what we do, no foundation We don't build no more, we just screw Half a bottle of Henny, girl, I'm going with the wind The same nigga say they happy for me Ain't want me to win, so I'm done on my friends Don't need help popping Coronas And reminiscing, I just call up Big Bro J And say it's time for fit And if I live forever, I hold this hate for some centuries You don't know how much I have you Doing what it meant to me, but motherfuck all that I don't even offer up the time to make the call back Stupid low though, if they don't get the picture now Man, I crop them out of the photo, I can't relate to my peers Been doing this shit for years, I'm motivated by fears I took the wheel and I steered my sound Not dictated by fuckboys in Atlanta Stay gifted like this album was ghost written by Santa Boss Forever like they decided to throw me under slammer Every song's a hit like they picture me underhand As I could drop a million songs, but they never gon' understand this Soapbox service for niggas Never given chances Fight our whole lives to get these weak ass advances Work twice as hard for this shit that they getting handed And this ain't even nothing we chose, nigga, we branded Still can't tell why y'all of these niggas mad at me I'm trying to get a hundred so I can put my team on salary Give it all to the art, man, I turn my life to a gallery uh, Man, damn, with a fucked up masterpiece 1100 shots and I swear, man, I felt them all If we ain't even good on our block, man, who can we call? pre decline state of mind, we broke crabs in the barrel Got us fighting our folk, man, this shit just a life of peril Winning has a price And leadership has a price When did winning not become the main thing? I always say keep the main thing the main thing Where, you know, winning is the only thing that truly matters Let me be very clear I'll never give up Never. When the grass is cut, the snakes will show. Gotta thank my little homie Naz for that, though. Yo, welcome back to another episode of Kicking It with Saint. This is gonna be a better episode than the last episode, cause the boy not tired. I'm maneuvering how I do these shows, cause I don't be smoking weed no more. At the moment, I don't smoke marijuana at the moment. It's been about a month, so. I'm going to tell you what's crazy. <clears throat> so I was such a copious weed smoker. like I smoked hella marijuana. I'm talking about, I, I put down about, y'all not going to believe the numbers, bro. But I'm being completely honest with you. I smoked every single day of the week. And I smoked about, so I smoked the blunt to wake up in the morning when I woke up. I smoked the blunt um, on my way to work. <clears throat> I smoked the blunt. When I got off of work or sitting there like in a parking lot, go back into work, smoked another blunt. When I got off of work, I'm going home, get home, smoke the blunt to ch uh, sit down and chill. I smoked a blunt uh, after I got out the shower and whatnot. If I wasn't tired yet, I get on a game, smoke a blunt. And then I'd be out like a light at some point in time. On a sleepless night, I could put down another blunt. So that was my daily routine. That's I, I literally I am a coat, bruh. You not understand. I'm not no joint. No, 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 no. I was smoking about ten plus blunts a day. I'm telling you, <clears throat> I am not BSing with you. I did a drug test the other day, like I did my own personal drug test. Still got weed in my system. I'm telling you right now. Then somebody told me they was like, bro. You probably got two months before that weed get out of your system. He said, you probably got at least another month, if that, he said, for before all that weed get out of your system. Because I have not been working out <clears throat> lately. Uh, I don't sweat that much at work right now because it's cold as shit. But I think I'm finna start drinking a whole bunch of water and working out a lot more now because I got to get this shit out of my system. 
but I did not realize weed stayed in your system that long because when you're not trying to stop smoking weed, you don't really care about how long it's in your system, especially when you got a job, you pay all your bills and all that type of stuff. If I wasn't caught up with the law, I'm trying to tell you, I'd still be smoking right now, but it's been a it's been an interesting month working in between how you, you know, my energy levels and whatnot. But we are here. We got a lot to talk about. See, I talked about that 49ers game, but I didn't even go deep into detail about the game. That's what we're here to do tonight. But we're here to do a lot of other things. But before we get into the show, and I do appreciate you for joining me, I want to get into Shannon Sharp real quick because he said something the other day and he say this shit all the time and it's really irritating to me. So, and I know I be talking talking about Shannon Sharp in these shows, but I want to make my uh, view on Shannon Sharp crystal clear. I don't have no problem with Shannon Sharp as far as like, uh, I think he is a very entertaining person. He got a lot of stories, funny sayings, and things like that. If you listen to him a lot, he say a lot of the same things <clears throat> over and over. So that's one thing that could blow you sometimes like when he get into this motivational speaker mode he could tell I, i'm telling i didn't heard him tell me the same motivational speech like 10 20 different times but that's neither here nor there i think he's very entertaining and whatnot <clears throat> but it's very clear to me that he is a busy individual so he do not be watching the entirety of all these games i have no doubt that he watched the kansas city chiefs when I listen to him break down the Chiefs, he's seeing exactly what I'm seeing when I watch the Chiefs. <clears throat> like every time I listen to him talk about the Chiefs, for the most part, everything he's saying is exactly what I would say about the Chiefs. Because I watched the Chief, uh, Chiefs play also. When he talk about the Baltimore Ravens, it is not what I am watching. And I watch more Baltimore games than Chief games. What he's saying and what I'm seeing He's watching highlights or he watching spot and he definitely stat watching. I am. I'm irritated with any analysts who talk about games that they not watching. Period. So that's not me. That's not an exclusivity thing to Shannon Sharp. All right. My problem with Shannon is when he, for some reason, he seemed to like attacking black people, bro. And I don't understand it. And I, and it's confusing to me because he do stand up for black people a lot. But like when he said the shit about black people, why we the lowest income in the uh, state because we spend money. Like, bro, the majority of black people do not spend their money on a uh, designer, bro. You live in a different reality, bro. But then this this thing where his his point of the reason people don't like him or don't agree with him and, or think he don't like Lamar is because and I want to make this crystal clear. He always say it's because they don't like me uh, calling out a black athlete. They say we got so few of them, yada, yada, yada. Listen to me. That is not that is a problem for me, but not in that way. My problem is that he keep using that as the excuse. So now you making it seem like black people is soft, like we can't take criticism. I criticize Dak, Lamar, Hurts, uh, per, uh, Fields, <coughs> Murray, Mahomes. I criticize them all. But you want to know the difference between me and you and me and a lot of the other analysts? I critique them on the same playing field. I don't have these dumbass rules and different i don't move the goal posts and things like that i understand that you judge uh superstars on a different level than you judge a uh a, a lower level quarterback but i judge when i'm watching a game and i'm breaking down that game bro i'm not half-assing it because it's one quarter example like i said the problem is not that we can't take criticism i'm irritated that that's his excuse constantly because now he's making black people look like we saw my problem is when you look at Pat Mahomes and the way you done broke Pat Mahomes down this season, the way you done been so eloquent and how the offense is not uh, working for how the receivers have not done their jobs, how the offensive line is now starting not to do this. everything Shannon Sharpton said about the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. He could have said about Baltimore in the past to defend Lamar Jackson, but you never did that when the receipt. Excuse me. When the receivers dropped a bunch of passes in that Pittsburgh game earlier this year, 
Shannon Sharp said Lamar got to play better because of the interception and the fumble, strip fumble at the end of the game. He didn't say nothing about all the drops that led up to that because it could have been a blowout leading up to that point. Three drop touchdowns. Multiple drop passes. Now, you done said that for Pat Mahomes all year, but that wasn't your thing when it came to Lamar. In the past, Lamar ain't had nowhere near the receiving core that Pat Mahomes done had in his uh, career. But you never said it was the receiving core for Lamar. You always said Lamar got to play better. Lamar got to throw it better. Lamar got to process better. Lamar got to be better from the pocket. You never looked at the actual games and realized, I mean, what the fuck else could Lamar do? I'm not telling you Lamar perfect. If you watch this show, you, you already know. I tell you, it's no such thing as a perfect quarterback because... Everybody can always get better at something. But what else could Lamar have done? Matter of fact, let me word it like this. I say it all the time. It's people paid to do a job also. If Lamar Jackson is the only person responsible for his own growth, then Lamar Jackson will always lose as long as he in Baltimore. That's essentially what Shannon Sharp has said when it comes to Kansas City. He done called out the uh, offensive weaponry. Kelsey not the same. You're uh, being cheap. Now you don't have Tyree kill. You could have said those same things about Baltimore. Baltimore spent money on the defensive side of the ball, would not put money into the offensive side of the ball for Lamar Jackson. You had a coordinator who clearly who Lamar had outgrown and they wouldn't change the coordinator. You could have made every single one. And like I done told you all before. The reason you don't make those excuses cannot just be. Well, Pat Mahomes don't want a Super Bowl because that's not the type of when you arguing about Pat Mahomes Super Bowls, that's his greatness compared to Lamar's. What we arguing has nothing to do with Pat Mahomes greatness. Pat Mahomes greatness is being held back right now. Because of the same things that was holding back Lamar in the uh, past. So Super Bowls is not why you can't have this argument for Lamar in the past, but now you having it for Pat Mahomes. It can't be. That's the problem people have with Shannon Sharp. The inconsistencies when you talk about Lamar Jackson compared to when you talk. And you know what I'm starting to realize? A lot of the fans watch Lamar. They watching these games because it's more and more fans that's coming to his defense. Now, like, bro, you're not watching these games. Dan, Dan Orlovsky said, bro, I know he the MVP because I watch the games. And that brings me to my next my real first point of the show is my irritation with the uh stat heads bro they like coke heads bro the way they're going on these stats bro the way they injecting these stats is crazy at this point you either just a hater or you i really think y'all speaking on how much y'all don't know football dead ass like the more and more i'm seeing people be addicted to this mvp for kirsten mccaffrey tyree kill the more and more i'm starting to realize Either y'all just don't like Lamar Jackson or y'all really don't know ball. Like it's shocking seeing how strong or how heavy Richard Sherman going. The way he dick guzzling um, for the 49ers right now is crazy. Because what if somebody told Richard Sherman in his career, well, you're not that great because you don't really get the uh, that many targets a year. You don't really get that many passes deflected. It's guys who get more interceptions and uh, returns than you. How stupid would that be when you know people not trying to throw it at Richard Sherman? In that case, you would say stats don't mean as much. You need to watch the games to understand why Richard Sherman don't put up the stats that this cornerback putting up because Richard Sherman don't get the ball thrown at him like this corner get thrown at him. But that's a story that stats wouldn't be able to tell you unless you watch the games. So it's very interesting to me that Richard Sherman would still be arguing somebody else over Lamar Jackson. And I told you, everybody who keeps saying, oh, this one of them years where <clears throat> the quarterback play haven't been strong enough for us to really give it to a quarter. That's nonsense, bro. I'm looking at a Pat Mahomes get his team to where they at right now. They do not have a good weaponry, a good receiving court. That's still going to be a team that could get to double digit wins and into the playoffs. That is more important to his team than what Christian McCaffrey is doing for the 49ers. And I done told you, I wouldn't give Tua, Dak, nor uh, Brock Purdy MVP. I'd give all three of those guys MVP over Tyreek and Christian McCaffrey. Offensive player of the year was created 
for Tyreek and Christian McCaffrey. They not having some mind blowing years. Neither one of them done broke up uh, the top record for like rushing yards, rushing touchdowns, um, receiving yards in a season. Neither one of them broke them records yet. If they break those records, I, I would I consider it possibly, possibly. But I don't remember those other receivers winning MVP the years they broke them records. I know AP won the uh, Super Bowl. I mean, not the Super Bowl, the MVP the year he uh, got that record. But no, Lamar Jackson is the MVP. And that is, to me, bro, the only way you could still be arguing stats is, like I said, if you just don't know ball, bro. Because if you're watching these games, and this argument that Richard Sherman having now is, well, you know, if Josh Allen wasn't on the Bills, then he would be MVP. I mean, he uh, so he basically the MVP. Look at his numbers. Bruh, Josh Allen and the Bills might not even make the. Give me a second. Son, it's a truck outside my crib dropping off a car. And this motherfucker loud as hell. Loud as hell. But like I was saying. If you don't think Lamar Jackson is the MVP at this moment, bro, you is a doofus. But this argument that Richard Sherman having about this Josh Allen thing, they might not even make the playoffs, bro. Now, obviously, I picked the Bills to make the playoffs. I picked them to win that division, I think, also. So that don't really mean much. But my faith in Josh Allen it just will never waver. Um, But I would like to point out, Josh Allen don't even have his team first in a division. Lamar Jackson got the best record in the league. Now, I know what people are going to say immediately. Immediately, Richard Sherman going to be like, well, that's a team thing. Look at his defense. Look at that. Wait a minute now. Do we do that when Pat Mahomes is having great years? Do we do that when Joe Burrow having great years? Because Joe Burrow done had a great defense the last couple years. Nobody said anything about it, and today wasn't great. I'm just saying. Josh Allen done had great defense the last couple years. Nobody said nothing about it till they wasn't great. <laughs> I'm just saying. It's, it's funny who we choose to root for and the way we choose to talk about players that we choose to like. Whereas if you unbiased like me, or even if you bias, because I do have a bias as far as like I like. It's not even a well, I could I have a bias, but I don't let my bias affect me. I speak on these guys. Now, it helped that I like football, so I pretty much like all these guys. Like, I don't have no ill will for none of these guys in my heart. That's why it's hard for me to not be fair when I talk about all of them. Like, people think I hate Joe Burrow. <laughs> I know people thought I hated Joe Burrow for the longest. People still probably think I hate Joe Burrow, but I'm just honest when it comes to Joe Burrow. It's hard for me not to believe that Lamar, Pat, or uh, Josh Allen wouldn't have a Super Bowl by now if they had those weapons. It's just hard for me to see it, for to, for me not to see it. That's why I have Joe Burrow rated below those three guys. Because I think when you look at the quarterbacks in the NFL, the ones that's the true game changers is Lamar and Pat, Gap, Josh Allen. I think if Josh Allen – I don't even think it would be a gap there if Josh Allen had – um. well, actually, no, that's interesting because – Josh Allen, I don't know if Josh Allen played with some of the talent that Lamar done had in the past – Cause boy, Stefan Diggs is a big part of Josh Allen, Josh Allen's uh growth. I'm not gonna lie. Because you look at some of these games and how bad some of these, I don't know if Josh Allen would have been able to get to where he got to if they had a left if they had a never went and got Stefan Diggs. Because do you see how bad some bro? Do you see how bad some of these receivers play for him? Uh the right reason I was cutting that off because somebody gave me a gift today. A gift card. And as I was using it to try to get me something to eat. I realized. Bro, this bitch expired on January 2020, bro. That's almost four years ago. It's four years ago next week. So, you know. That was interesting. But. I want to get into the game because I said. Going into this game, I said one of the biggest keys for this game, to, I said it would be two, it would be two pieces, two, two things in this game that would be super important for the Ravens. The keys to this game or, or the, the pieces that I didn't think the media was talking about enough. I obviously wasn't going to talk about it anyway. Don't watch fucking games, but Patrick Queen and Kyle Hamilton. 
And for a second, I was very critical. I don't even know if it's critical, bro. I just call it how I see it. But I guess you could say I was very critical of Kyle Hamilton in the past. Not Kyle Hamilton, um, Patrick Queen. But what did I, everything I done said about Patrick Queen that, that, could, that could get him to be a great player, it's done been proven right. I'm not a I told you so type of motherfucker, but every single thing I done said about Kyle Hamilton, I mean, Patrick Queen. Am I not right about it? I said we need to go get Roquan. As soon as he they said that he wasn't working a deal out with the uh, Chicago Bears, I made a video and said, yeah, the number one team he probably going to end up getting traded to is Baltimore because that's the exact type of middle linebacker they'll go get. That's the exact type of player they'll go get. And I thought it was a dumbass move by Chicago because I don't think you'll get the value back for Roquan Smith because he is a one of one type of player. So, I mean, you know, he walking into the Hall of Fame first ballot. So that's just an idiotic move to trade away a middle linebacker like that. Because there's no value that you can get back that can replace a Roquan Smith. And I told you when he got here. Patrick Queen was going to be a way better player because of it. Because Pat Queen's best year, in my opinion, is when he played beside LJ Fort in LJ Fort's best year. He played great off of a better linebacker. But I said, if you want to get the most out of Pat Queen, bro, you have to start lining him up to send him on blitzes and disrupt plays in other ways. You can't just have him drop back in coverage. I think he done got better in coverage this year. But I still don't think he is a great coverage linebacker. But he done got his his improvements have been vast, <clears throat> which it helped when you got Roquan Smith playing beside you. His tackling, obviously, he's not a tackler that Roquan is, but he's not running past players no more. He's not just getting shoved off by the uh, running back no more. He's not getting slung off uh, one way. Like I think the game done slowed down and he done sped up even more. That's why you see him make a lot of tackle for losses. That's why you see him disrupt a play in the backfield. Now, before he would be the first one in the backfield, but he missed so, the miss the play so fast, the player was still in the running back or whoever catch it, caught it, would still end up uh, pulling off good yards after the catch. Now you see him get to the backfield, and even if he don't make the tackle, he disrupt the play enough to where other dudes around him can make the play. So now you're using his speed in a way that it's a benefit to Baltimore. They wasn't doing that in the past. And maybe it was just because they didn't have the personnel at the time. But you look at what they done been able to do with Pat Queen. And it always helped when Pat Queen improved his game himself also. That means everybody did their job. The trainers, the coaches, the staff, and Pat Queen, the player. Everybody who was getting paid to be great ended up make, being great. So that's what you like to see. <clears throat> You never want to see the player get better without the help of coaches or the coaches help the player get better and the player never get better on his own. You always want to see both parties mutually working together to help both parties. Get, the player really is the more important one. But, the you know, I've seen coaches become better coaches off of the players that they around. Bro, this apple juice is hitting, boy. But shout out to Patrick Queen. Just to me, he having an unbelievable year. I don't know if he, I think he done priced himself out of Baltimore personally. <laughs> so I hope everything that he learned in this year, if he is priced, if he, if he has indeed priced himself out of Baltimore, cause I would never tell a player to take a pay cut. Yeah, I know me, bro. I want these players to get as much money as they possibly can or as, po as much money as they think that they deserve, bro. If Pat Queen want to take a pay cut to stay in Baltimore for years to come, I'm cool with that unless it's like a major pay cut because I just think that'd be stupid because Pat Queen is going to get a big time offer from a other t from another team. I could see Chicago trying to give him a big time contract and they just and they got Tremaine Edmonds over there. So that would actually be smart. But I think Pat Queen going to be the highest paid uh, middle linebacker. I think he going to get the biggest middle linebacker deal in the offseason. I don't think he going to get Roquan Smith money. But I do think he's going to get a couple dollars, a couple million short of Roquan Smith money because of the season he's having right now. And I don't think teams, too many teams, especially desperate teams that want to get better at the position, I don't think they're going to look around and say to themselves, oh, well, you know, he got 
Kyle Hamilton over there, Roquan Smith over there, a great defensive front over there, Kyle Van Noy over there, Jadevian Clowney over there, a great secondary with Marlowe and Stevens. They not going to say that. They just going to see how great he done had, the season he done had, the way he can get to the backfield and make these tackles and plays. And I really do hope this is uh, Pat Quinn evolving into a top-tier linebacker because he's going to make another team a lot better. I just hope he make the right decision in the offseason as far as if a lot of different teams giving him big-time contracts, make the smart decision, bro. Go to the team that's going to constantly put another player around you to make sure that you're not having to do it all by yourself. Because you don't never want to get to a point where you feel like you have to do everything. Look at how easy the game is when you play next to a Roquan Smith. I'm not saying that to say take a pay cut in Baltimore. I'm saying that to say think about who the next great player you want to be playing next beside you is. Or next to you is. You don't want to go and play. And I'm not taking a shot at no no player. But you don't want to end up playing side by side with a bum. Basically. You know. So find another middle linebacker. That make the game easier for you. And when you look at the culture that you coming from in Baltimore, bro, if you're getting all the money, if you're getting multiple teams offering you big time contracts, please pick the team with the best culture. Culture might matter more than them other two things, because if you got a great culture, you'll always do those other two things. All right. I don't want to see you leave Baltimore, make a lot of money and not still be great. I want to see you be great like C.J. Mosley is after he left Baltimore. Hell, the Jets would be a great place for Pat Queen in the offseason. I ain't even going to lie to you. But the improvements Pat Queen done made this year is unbelievable. I just think he done pra- priced himself out of Baltimore. Rightfully so. He deserved a bread he about to get. Because I've been very critical of Pat Queen. So I needed to take this time to be highly, highly celebratory of Pat Queen. And the other uh, key to the game I said would be Kyle Hamilton. Because how do you use Kyle Hamilton? How I mean, and at this point, so I know a lot of people is now arguing Kyle Hamilton is the best safety in the game, and I agree with that. I think he is the best safety in the game. Um, You have to understand how crazy it is, though, that he is even arguably the best safety in the game. I watched every single game he played last year. At no point in time throughout that, after watching all those games, that I think he would be where he is this quick, this fast. This is not even real when I sit down and think about it. Kyle Hamilton done made one of the biggest jumps from year one to, he made a Lamar Jackson type of jump, bro. The way Lamar, Patrick Mahomes, Joe Burrow, how they, uh, the first year might have been a little shaky. Next year, they them dogs. That, that That's Kyle Hamilton. And it might be even harder for him to do it because he have to play in so much space. Bro, the man can play in coverage. He can play in the box. You know who Kyle Hamilton remind me of? I said he reminded me of Ed Reed, but I, I didn't want nobody to feel like I was disrespecting Ed Reed or being by Ed Reed, one of my favorite players all time. My second favorite player all time. Well, it might be third because Lamar Jackson is... <laughs> Lamar Jackson get a Super Bowl. It don't matter if he get a Super Bowl or not, bro. But he keep getting up there. It's closer and closer. Right now, Lamar at third. It's Aaron Donald, Ed Reed, Lamar Jackson. Cal Hamilton is definitely going to be on that list because he remind me so much of Ed Reed. But you know who he remind me of, of a current player? Because this is what I think. When you look at Cal Hamilton, he can play great in coverage. Look at the play he made in that game against Brock Purdy. He baited Purdy into making that throw. And I understand the people who say, well, they should have sent uh, George Kittle on a, a out route or up and out uh, to dis- to make Kyle Hamilton have to commit to something. They didn't. I'm just going to talk about what happened, not what could have happened, should have happened, or would have happened. The way, the way he baited him into that pick was the exact same thing Ed Reed did to Peyton Manning a couple years ago. Now, I might have not been to that extreme, but the fact that he got that type of intelligence, that quick it's just been a year. Like last year, he was a rookie, ladies and gentlemen. He's going to be an all pro. When they do the all pro for uh, safeties, he will be the first one taken. He will be the first name taken. He will probably be in conversations for def- He'll probably get some defensive player of the year votes. That's how unreal it's been from him from year one to year two. That's coaching. That's the player. It's unreal. How great this dude is. 
unreal. The way he can play in coverage, the way he can come play in the box, the way he can, you can line him up on a certain player and he can do, it's Tyron Matthew, the honey badger. LSU's on. He t- and what make it so much crazier is he taller, longer, probably stronger than uh, Ka- uh, Tyron Matthew. Unreal. That's who he remind me of. Shout out to Tyron because I think Tyron, a first ballot Hall of Famer, without a shadow of a doubt, that man is a stud. Boy, that bo- Tyron Matthew was that boy. But shit, he's still that boy. But that's who Kyle Hamilton remind me of as far as the current players. And it's even crazier, like I said, because of Kyle Hamilton got like the perfect frame. He got like a Cam Chancellor type of build, really. Like a Ed Reed type of build more so. But he could get to a Cam Chancellor by the end of it. Like, bro, Kyle Hamilton can hit. He legit in coverage. Because you got some safeties who box safeties. You you much prefer to have them come down and play in a box. Like a, I don't really want to call out names, bro. I really don't want to call their names out, but I'm not trying to be disrespectful. Jamal Adams is a great safety. You just don't really want him playing back in coverage. He is a box safety. He graded coming up and basically being a third or fourth linebacker or fifth linebacker at times. Whereas a Tehran, it's not fair using Tehran because he can do both of them. Um, a Kevin Byard, you much rather have him play back in coverage because he is far. You know who I think is better in coverage? Than they are in the box, even though I mean, who is better in the coverage than they are in the box, but they great in the box too. Minka Fitzpatrick, bruh. Minka Fitzpatrick to me, the top three safeties, and I know Derwin James is a great safety too. He borderline uh can do what these dudes can do. I just don't think he is as great in coverage as these other guys are. But where 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 he lack in coverage. The only one who really lack as far as like the, t- I don't even know if I could even honestly tell you that Mink, cause for one, I'm hella biased cause Mink is a, uh, roll tot. He a crimson tot. Just know them, them dogs, bro. But Cal Hamilton to me is the best one out of all of them. Youth and how quick he done learned this. Bro, you got to understand last year he was playing in space and trying to figure it out. This year he is an all pro first team safety. And the 49ers found out why. And if that's going to be your secret weapon from here on out, see, this is the thing. Lamar Jack, I'm, I'm finally, I'm happy that Eric DaCosta, who I done gave a lot of shit to, is starting to figure it out. Because Lamar Jackson was the only game changer on the, uh, this team. Now you get Roquan. You traded for Roquan. That is a one of one. That is a game changer. That is somebody who, when the offense for the other team talk about ball, they say, how do we figure out Roquan Smith? Patrick Queen is borderline. I think he get overhyped at time. He was overhyped in the past. He having a great year this year, but I don't think he is what Roquan is. And now you got Kyle Hamilton. Kyle Hamilton is a, now a guy who defenses, uh, who offensive meeting room is going to say, okay, we got Roquan Smith. We got Kyle Hamilton. You got your Ray Lewis, Ed Reed replica. Ain't that something? And don't forget, when it comes to the Ravens, you also got Williams, Marlowe, Stevens. Now, Marlowe could get back to being an all pro um, corner more quicker than I think Stevens is, because I don't think Stevens is as good as Marlowe. I think Marlowe on his best day is still one of the top corners in the game. Stevens on his best day is a great corner, but I don't think he what Marlowe is because Marlowe physical. He can hit. He can strip guys. The only thing Marlowe ain't never really been great at, coincidentally, he got one in this game was getting interceptions. But he do basically everything else great, except for when he play had to go run uh, streaks against big dudes like uh, A.J. Green or or A.J. Brown. Not A.J. Green, A.J. Brown. But you look at the game that Kyle Hamilton had. I know everybody talk about how he got hit. He laid on the ground. They got he got back up and got the interception. But just look at how disruptive he is throughout the entirety of the game. You don't know where he's going to be before the play. If we see him where he at, you don't know where he's going to end up when the play start. You don't know where he's going to end when the play end. That's the beauty of a Kyle Ham- and the beauty in that is that's great on the on the off against the offense and it's phenomenal for uh it's bad for the offense, phenomenal for the defense cuz they know he's going to be in the right position. Wherever he's going to be at, he's going to be in the right position to make a play. 
the more and more you get these game-changing players on defense, that's why I said this was a big game to me for the defense, not for the offense. I knew that the Ravens' offense would figure it out, and that's why there's no shade at Brock Purdy. But I told you, I saw this woman say about two, three weeks ago, named Liv, she was on brother from another. Brock Purdy, when you look at everything around him, it's no disrespect when we call him a game manager, but he definitely is not having to do what Cam, I mean, what uh, Lamar have to go out there and do. What a Pat Mahomes got to go out there and do. What a Josh Allen got. If Josh Allen, <laughs> Pat Mahomes, or Lamar Jackson go out there and throw four interceptions, hell, if they have a bad game, it don't even have to be multiple interceptions. Just let them have a bad game. The chances of that team winning that game is highly unlikely. The 49ers had a, much, a bunch of turnovers by Purdy and still was in the game for the majority of this game because they have a great defense and a great uh, run game and the others. But then Lamar put his foot on the gas pedal, and that's when it was over. I'd have been very consistent in how I talk about great quarterbacks. So it was never anything personal against Brock Purdy. But at some point in time, I said it, you have to make a play in these games. I know Lamar Jackson going to make a play. I done seen him against these quarterbacks. I done seen him in these big games against these quarterbacks on primetime. My concern was never Lamar Jackson. I haven't seen Brock Purdy have to play against what I done seen Lamar have to play against on a consistent basis, year in and year out, and step up and make big plays. And while at no point in time did I ever say, I think the 49ers are going to win this game against the Ravens, because I've been telling you for like two, three weeks that I thought the Ravens was going to win this game from when I first brought it up. I told you the way that they win this game, if they somehow do, is Lamar got to struggle mightily and Christian McCaffrey, Debo, Ayuk, Kittle, they got to go off. Because Lamar Jack, bro, the difference in a great quarterback, a game changing quarterback, I told you they don't have to play perfect. They just got to play perfect when it matters. I done seen these dudes throw three, four, five interceptions and still win the game. Not Maybe not five, but four interceptions and still win. So I done seen Joe Burrow go into Pittsburgh and throw, what, five interceptions and still damn near win that game. I done seen Lamar Jackson throw four or five interceptions in Cleveland one night, still won that game. I done seen Pat Mahomes throw four interceptions, or was it three or four interceptions in the game against the, was it the Raiders? I can't remember if it was the Raiders back then when he had threw all those interceptions, but it still almost uh, won that game. So great quarterbacks, Josh Allen, we didn't see him have big interception games and still win those games because for a great quarterback, the game changers, they don't got to be perfect all game. They got to be perfect when it matter. Now it might come a game where they have to match score for score, but that's usually when they play against another great quarterback. And, Maybe they do run into a team that day that's having a great day, great team day, great. Just to so be it. But these quarterbacks win the games they're not supposed to win. They definitely win the games you don't choose them to pit because all of America was basically choosing the 49ers. Except for me. Except for me. And I'm pretty sure none of the Baltimore fans was picking them either. But And not my, my guy, James Jones. Shout out to James Jones. Hey, Baltimore fans, we got to. Gotta show James Jones some love, bro. He he been going hard for the Ravens. He been one of our biggest supporters, bro. I'm telling you. The way he been rocking, when they was trying to tell him that he couldn't pick Lamar and trust Lamar more than Brock Purdy, he laughed at him. He said, No, I trust Lamar Action Jackson. I'm trying to tell you, bro. Touch my heart. Steve Young, you know, he said Lamar one of his guys. I don't understand if you love football, you not loving Lamar Jackson just don't make sense to me. Becoming addicted to this, uh, well, you know, his stats just not as good as these other guys. Doesn't matter. So I saw somebody today on that Cam Hayward podcast say he only got 24 total touchdowns. So now we punishing him because every time they get in the goal line, he don't choose to run the ball in. He choose to hand it to his running back. 
Because Gus Edwards got like 14 touchdowns this year. So you telling me if we took four, uh, 10 of those away from Gus and gave them to Lamar and Lamar had 34 touchdowns, now he MVP worthy. Because some numbers, do you know how fucking stupid that is? But that's the argument people want to keep getting on TV trying to make. See, I done told y'all in the past, man. This fucking stat argument, bro. This fucking stat argument for people who don't watch the games. I'm, you know what I, you know what made me very happy when I think about this channel. No matter where we go, the way we started was, I'm not gonna kill y'all with stats because stats don't matter. Stats can be formed to make an argument for and against every single player in the same fucking conversation that you're having with somebody. Stats don't tell the whole story. Stats is for people who don't watch the games. If you watch the games, you don't need stats because everything you're seeing is just going to pop up when we see the film. That's how we're going to know if you're watching it or not. Point blank period. That's why I knew that Buddy for uh, the Falcons was wilding when he tried to tell me, oh, you must not watch the games. I'm like, Buddy, my guy. Now, maybe you still listen to me to this day, but you was wilding. Now, shout out to Jesse Bates, bro, because I didn't think Jesse Bates was going to be this great, this quick for the Falcons. He definitely got to be in conversation for one of the best safeties this year also. Him and uh, Bland for the Cowboys. But Cal Hamilton still the best safety in the league to me. And he said he not playing for that all-white team because he ain't even white. <laughs> That just likes the white people, bro. <clears throat> I don't know why I didn't swallow this juice. That just, that just likes the white people, bro. Pause. Try to tell you what your issue is. Oh, he black, but we, he black and what? Like uh, Saboa or something like that. But we going to say he white. Samoans don't, I ain't never seen no Samoan identify as a, a white man. Dwayne and Rod Johnson said he identifies as an African American and Samoan. Because his dad was African American, his mama was Samoan. Why in God's name would he go right down under his application, Caucasian? What? That's crazy. My Caucasian brethren. That is wild. If I, Abdi, do you, uh, when you fill out an application, you don't put Caucasian, do you? Because I know Henry is all the way black. So that's why I ain't asked you, Henry. Um, but I know Abdi. I don't think Abdi is African-American. He might got African-American in him. But I'm thinking he is uh, of another culture. I think he, he probably don't identify as African-American. But if he had to choose between African-American, okay, and maybe he do Af uh, identify as African-American. But I'm, I'm wondering, have you ever put Caucasian? Because maybe I'm tripping. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I'm wilding. You know what I'm saying? Now to my Caucasian brethren, don't attack me. Don't, don't attack me. All right? You know what I like? It do be happening. It, like, we do have videos where a white dude will comment, oh, why you got to bring race into it? But we done had a black dude comment that shit too. And I just, it feels so, you know how sad I get? Yeah, let me tell y'all something, man. When I see a black person say, why you had to bring race up? That shit just breaks my heart, bro. Because the oppressor has won. <laughs> you you let him win. You let him win. And not even just that. That, that would be just being funny. But when you look at this, it's so, it's not even a why you bring race. To, it's now at the point where it's how can you not be seeing the race problem in this? And the, how one race is judged based on the other. How the goalposts is moved for one and not the other. And I could just hear the white dude right now. Well, we don't say this about Pat Mahomes. Mm-mm-mm. mm mm But you let the oppressor win, my brother. Congratulations. Anyways, back to the game. Because another thing that I saw in this game that I said would be important is stop Christian McCaffrey in space. Christian McCaffrey had one drive in this game. The Ravens shut it down after that point. They didn't let him do anything else. They didn't let him do shit else after that. I told you. This was the game. The Dolphins may be ready. And listen. I do have um, 
So I never at no point in time thought the uh, 49ers was going to win this game. A part of me do feel the Dolphins have a chance to beat us. I had no part of me thought the 49ers was beating us. I, it's like I said, the people who was breaking down the game, picking the 49ers, in my opinion, just didn't watch the Ravens play this season. They don't play. They want to bitch about how the 49ers score a lot of points on bad teams and how the Ravens don't score a lot of points on great teams. And so the Ravens, I think, is uh, they got like a seven and one or an eight and one record against teams over 500. They done beat uh, six of them teams by 13 or 14 points or more. So when you really them is stats that matter. But I could have told you that because. I watched the games. I've been saying it the whole time. I like the 49ers. It's hard for me to picture them beating a Ravens team that's done beat the Cincinnati Bengals twice with Joe Burrow playing in both games. Plus, they play the Bengals twice a year, every year. I understand how much we love certain offenses, but at no point in time has my opinion changed on the best offense in football as far as the supporting cast. I love C-Mac. Debo and Ayuk are great receivers. I do not look at them the way I look at Chase, uh, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, Joe Mixon. To me, that is just a far better supporting cast than what they have over there in San Fran. I'm sorry. It's no disrespect to none of them boys over there in San Fran, even though I'm going to get to Debo in a couple. I just feel like when I watch Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, that's just different to me. That is like reminding me of Marvin Harrison, Reggie Wayne, Dallas Clark. Like that's some of the to me, that's reminding me of some of the best receiving cores I done seen. And I'm trying to think of some receiving cores that because I don't even think that Colts receiving core was better than this one. So when I see the Ravens play teams like that, the Dolphins got to play the Bills twice a year. They get they lose to them most of the time, but the Dolphins have to play in the AFC, a tougher conference. Now, while they haven't beaten good teams this year, and the team that they beat that was a good team is coincidentally sucks on the road, and that's a team that also don't beat good teams. So that was interesting, but I'll get to that Dolphins breakdown when I get to that Dolphins breakdown. That's not going to be on this episode, but I just don't think that the Dolphins are the same team that the Ravens are. Um, But I do believe that the Dolphins will give the Ravens a great fight for the simple reason. Listen, do I think that the Dolphins are better than San Fran? Not necessarily. But if they played, I wouldn't be amiss at taking the Dolphins to win that game. Obviously, they don't beat good teams this year, but I'm talking about like just on a, if they played a couple times, both teams could win. Now, I understand it's also that caveat of Kyle Shanahan coaching against one of his pupils, but. The receiving core, Tyreek going to be the best receiver in that game. Jalen Waddle will probably be the fourth best receiver um, or the third best receiver, depending on how you feel about Ayuk. Uh, I mean, both defenses is pretty great. Uh, both defenses is a good defense. I know most people would probably take San Fran, even though the Dolphins had a number one ranked defense in the league right now. Um, and I know stats ain't everything, obviously, but. You know, I probably lean more towards San Fran's defense in that game, but the running the running back might not be Mostert, and them boys might not be Christian McCaffrey, but they didn't score just as many touchdowns this year. So I'm just telling you, I wouldn't be opposed because it's nothing in that the quarterback position in that game is not standing out for either side to me. Brock Purdy and Jalen, Brock Purdy and uh, Tua Tungavailoa to me are both game managers. So. It would just be whoever had the better game plan going into that day um, and how I felt uh, they was playing leading up into that game because that's that should basically explain to you why I did not pick the uh, 49ers to beat us. However, it's just so different because the 49ers don't have to play against the teams that the Dolphins have to play against on a yearly basis, which is why I lean more towards – plus – the way I kept telling y'all the 49ers kept losing to Lamar in the past, the Dolphins done beat Lamar. Now, they did have to have a crazy comeback from our defense folding, but our defense did not have Roquan Smith at that time. They also did not have Kyle Hamilton doing what he's doing now. So this is going to be a completely different game for the uh, Dolphins. Now, if you're a Dolphin fan, you got to pray that this is a different game for you because Lamar Jackson done lit your defense up 
damn near religiously every time he play you. So at some point in time, your defense is going to have to figure out how to stop Lamar Jackson, but I don't think that'll be this week because I think Lamar is just so zoned in right now. He's so locked in. I think one of the reasons he's not turning the ball over is because he's not trying to do too much. He's not trying to be Superman. He's not out there looking for the biggest play every time. He's just looking for the smart play. And I know there's some plays out there that people will be like, well, why he didn't throw it to the dude? Bro, Lamar is not a check down merchant, bro. So I'm not going to get mad when he don't see a check down that he want to throw to all the time, bro. He ain't never been a check down merchant merchant in his career. If he was, y'all would be like, oh, well, he only hit check downs, even though y'all don't do that to Justin Herbert when he was a check down merchant. Yeah, I didn't do that to Joe Burrow when he had that year where he was a check down merchant getting extra yards off of Jamar chasing them boys. Yeah, I didn't do that. But I rest my case. You look at the 49ers defense in this game. Not too much rushing and Lamar Jack. That, you know, I was watching this game and I was thinking to myself, man, the 49ers might just be a bunch of dumbasses. Because either they're not rushing uh, fully like James Jones was showing or they just running straight up the field, bro, and letting Lamar run clean past him. I don't know what contain was for uh, Chase Young on his side because his side just seemed to always be able to get open. It seemed like he got uh, swallowed into the block every single play, it felt like. And I'm going to tell you what's interesting. So you watched that Raiders game earlier that day, and you saw how much Max Crosby and the guys was always in the backfield against Pat Mahomes. Was not the same for uh, Lamar Jackson and the boys. So – the third thing that I said would be important for this game, the offensive line. They had to give Lamar Jackson time to work, and they did that. Were they perfect? Absolutely not. But they were perfect for the most part, and that's what was important. They were perfect when Lamar Jackson needed them to be perfect. It wasn't a ton of yards that was taking away big plays in this game like they had in the past. They had them. They still had them. They still had drops in this game. They still, But I thought this was one of the better games from the receivers also. I thought this was one of the better games from the receiving core for the for the Ravens. I was going to say the Robins, <laughs> but for the Ravens. When you look at this game, if you haven't seen um, in a, the Baltimore Ravens wired, bro, Patrick Queen is Patrick Queen. Roquan Smith is different, bro. He told them boys, get their ass off the field after that uh, interception by uh, P- PQ. I told y'all, man. He was, as soon as he became a free agent, I said, or as soon as I knew that they wasn't going to resign him in Chicago, I said, the Ravens got to go trade for him, but he is literally what they've been missing since Ray Lewis. He is the replacement. He is the guy that y'all been missing since CJ Mosley, actually, because I'm not going to do CJ Mosley like that. CJ Mosley was an absolute stud, but you haven't had this type of linebacker since the CJ Mosley and before that, or uh, Ray Lewis, even though you had some decent pieces in there in between like a Daryl Smith and the boys, but Roquan Smith is just different. If you go watch that episode of Wired this week, bro, his energy is just infectious, bro. The way he get the guys going, the way he talked to them throughout the game, goosebumps. Goosebumps. Now, I'm seeing a lot of a lot of 49er media fans out there, man, who just can't take that L, bro. They just can't they can't take that L. Oh, Lamar not really the MVP. Oh, y'all letting this be a week-to-week basis. You see, you get these idiots, these type of arguments, when you don't have consistent arguments throughout the entirety of your time as a, um analyst. Like, when you're consistent, for the most part, in your takes, you're not just going off of, like, stats and things like that. Most people can't question your logic and your takes because you're always going to have the ammunition. But when you're one of them morons, who don't have good takes, you rely on recency bias and things like that. That's when you allow these bozos to be able to hop on TV and be wrong, but be able to feel like they got a argument, even though they argument not right. It's a weird space, bro. You got these morons on TV like Emmanuel Acho. I really just... They get paid so much money, bro. You just imagine that they, the least they could do is have some type of integrity. Or at least the day could do is watch the game from a different type of angle than this bias everybody else in the media feel this way. And I understand some of them be like on some real ignorant shit where they be like they want to be so left from a, uh, from everybody else on obvious shit that they'll say some outlandish shit. But but James Jones and um, Joy Taylor both clearly 
I don't think Joy as much as James Jones, but they both clearly is watching these games because both of them picked Baltimore to beat San Fran. And James Jones was super confident in it. Really, Joy was also, but James Jones wasn't listening to no argument. He was like, I done seen Lamar do it. I done seen him play these games and win these games. And it was everything that I was telling people. But, you know, it's just this addiction that we have in 2020, whatever the fuck year it is, about not actually watching the games. That's why I get irritated when I listen to the media go on TV and say a bunch of whole bunch of stupid shit and not. um, Hey. Yo, I was watching Nightcap. I didn't watch the whole episode because I was still a little irritated with Shannon. But the other night I was watching Nightcap and he had Gilbert Arenas on. Bro, he need to try to get Jeff Teague on that motherfucker. Jeff Teague more entertaining to me, bro. Teague is hilarious. Teague is fucking hilarious. But I hope everybody out there. Well, actually, to the 49ers, man. You know, listen. I told you, boys, you was going to lose this game. At no point in time did I have faith in y'all boys. and uh, Like, it's nothing personal. And Debo, bro, this dude got pranked by some kids. But even before he knew it was a prank, the man tried to call Cam Newton out and have a private comment. That man can't say, motherfucker, I ain't got your number. <laughs> But that was some whole shit, uh, Debo, getting on KI. Y'all know how I feel about these dudes getting on these white people shows, man, and then trying to call, uh, go hard at their own culture, bro. What, what would possess you to call out? Can that man was real salty that they lost that game? Then I'll say the NFL know we still the best team in the league. No, nah, they thought y'all was the best team in the league till Baltimore and Lamar came in and put their foot in y'all ass. And I was being respectful. I didn't even say y'all was going to get blown out, but the episode before the game, I said, if it was one of the teams, I said, if a blowout happened in this game, it's going to be the 49ers that get blown out. Everything that I told you that could have happened in this game happened. I'm just saying, it hit different when you watch the fucking games. I done had more worry going into games against the Bengals and the Dolphins, the Chiefs, the Bills, teams like that. Because they got a, they hardened by a different type of, they forged in a different type of fire, baby. You know what I'm saying? The NFC to me is soft. I'm sorry. And I'm not saying soft as in like all oh, these boys soft. I'm saying soft as in that's just not a, a tough conference, bro. It's not. The way I felt about how I told you I would still probably take the Dolphins, like it's just not crazy to me to take the Dolphins over the Niners. Bro, I would take the Chiefs over the Niners right now. Chiefs don't even have a good offense. Motherfuckers don't know how to score the football. I take them over the 49ers right now, bro. Put them in the Super Bowl. I would take them over the Niners right now. See, with all the dick riding people do for Kyle Shanahan, and y'all know how much I fuck with Kyle Shanahan on the channel. Bruh, the motherfucker is not invincible. I said that shit leading into the game. These motherfuckers can be beat. I saw Joe Burrow go in there earlier this year and beat the shit out of them boys. I saw Pat Mahomes when they was at a high last year going there and beat the shit out of them boys. I seen Lamar Jackson when they was at their high beat them boys. I seen Pat Mahomes when they was at their high in the Super beat them boys. So I don't know why people think that the 49ers is invincible. If anything, they got one of the biggest weaknesses of any team in the league, in my opinion. If you want to be a great team, they can't beat great quarterbacks. That's a far worse uh, thing to have than a bad defense, a bad offense, a bad this, a bad. Bro, they can't beat great quarterbacks. Usually the team you're going to be playing to get to a Super Bowl or to win a Super Bowl is a great quarterback. They done been blessed by the fact that Jalen Hurts and Dak Prescott is not Pat Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen. Hell, some people don't even think that they Justin Herbert, even though. I'm really starting to get irritated with motherfuckers who think that Justin Herbert is better than either of them two dudes who is constantly winning and constantly in the playoffs. I just think it's crazy that y'all keep giving passes to Justin Herbert, but this ain't a Justin Herbert video. But what I'm saying is, listen, 49er fans. 
You just got to go back to the drawing board. It's really not your fault, to be honest with you. Like I said, I didn't see who you played this year. I didn't watch you play this year. I like Brock Purdy. I'm, I was never at no point in time. I love C-Mac. But, yeah, I seen who y'all been beating the shit out of. And I told you, I never believed in the Cowboys as far as beating y'all because they ain't done it. So y'all beating the Cowboys to me meant nothing. Y'all beating the Eagles to me was a big one as far as what it do for the conference and whatnot. But as far as like that wasn't the Eagles at their best, in my opinion. So I give you respect for beating them. But it ain't like if it was like a shootout or a back and forth clutch game. And y'all, y'all, y'all beat the shit out of them, too. So it wasn't like a them to me was two teams. The Eagles was more so battle tested, even though they was playing again because they had beat the Chiefs and they had beat the Bills. That's big time. That's why I still have faith in the Eagles, because if the Eagles can figure out how to beat the Bills and the Chiefs, the Eagles can figure out how to beat the Chief, uh the 49ers. For some reason, the Eagles secondary is just hot garbage. And the Eagles going through this little shaky, shaky stretch right now where they just not playing great football. I don't know if Jalen Hurts is injured. I don't know what it is. And the four, uh, the Cowboys can't even beat the Dolphins, bro. So I have no faith in the Cowboys. So, yeah, the 49ers might get to the Super Bowl. But regardless if it's the Ravens, the Chiefs, the Bills that get there to play them, I still would take an AFC team pretty much over uh, the 40. See, what I think the 49ers is setting y'all up for is failure at the highest level damn near every year. They keep making y'all believe that having no game-changing quarterback is cool, even though you saw what they gave up when they thought they could go get one. Now they're doing it all over again. Jimmy Garoppolo was a quarterback who you never thought was great, but then he got with Kyle Shanahan and you started thinking he was great. Now, depending on, it don't really matter how much better you think Brock Purdy is than Jimmy Garoppolo. What you know is Brock Purdy is not on the same talent level as a Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, Patrick, Lamar. You know he's not on that level. So what they essentially doing again is taking an under uh, a, a, pro- a project type of player or a player who we know is not a great player and making you believe I can win with this. And essentially what they will always do as long as they play against Lamar, Pat Mahomes, Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, they're going to let you down. God forbid C.J. Stroud, uh, Josh, uh, Jalen uh, – Justin Herbert and them boys become great quarterbacks. 49ers got no shot. I can see the 49ers if it go bad next year. I mean, at the end of this year, I can see them trying to go get Justin Fields, to be honest with you. Like, they the type of team that would do that. Like, to me, the 49ers, as great as they have been, as great as they are, they really battling this this curse of every time we want to hit our peak, we got to play against a great quarterback. And we just not a team built to beat that great quarterback consistently because they've never done it under Kyle Shanahan. Shit. I mean, when he was with the 40, when he was with the uh, Falcons, they ended up losing to Brady. So, and I think Matt Ryan, a game manager type of quarterback. So, I mean, I'm just saying, but you know, shout out to the 49er fans. With that being said, I appreciate y'all for joining me on another. Listen, man, I could have went in on the haters and whatnot, but ultimately all the haters on the uh, sports shows and whatnot, man, they can go suck a dick. Nobody cares about what they have to say. Uh, Mike Flores, none of y'all bums. But with that being said, I appreciate y'all for joining me on another episode of Kingdom of Saint. I'm about to eat some rice. Tell somebody you fuck with him. Tell somebody you love him. We done, we had a great end to the year, man. We had a phenomenal end to the year. Now let's make January a un real year i appreciate y'all for joining me i fuck with y'all love you say now i got the moves like hot sauce little mama taking the top off i'm laying down getting topped off after this she know she getting knocked off i know she loving the money so i keep on thumbing and thumbing she says she horny when she take a shot so i keep them coming and coming now i'm putting dick in her tummy scoop her up like i'm raking her something you would think shawty red track the way that she running and running you getting dumber and dumber you out here chasing the bone after she finished from giving me dome, the Uber is taking her home. <laughs> <laughs> Tight. Tight. Tight.